How many elections did you experience? How many presidents, vice presidents, senators, congressmen, governors did you choose? Do you always cast your votes? Election for us is the process of choosing our leaders. So it means that we are called upon to choose a leader. Essentially, that is what voting means. When it comes to choosing a leader, the inclination is to choose someone who is most qualified, who is most capable. So the leadership qualities to be considered would be academic qualifications, status, experience, achievements, success, and a respectable standing in life. We would certainly want to choose someone that we have confidence in, as well as someone who will meet our requirements. As for the candidate for the leadership role, what he or she says or promises the people will be <coughs> scrutinized when he or she assumes the office. This is generally how it goes in the secular world, and we are familiar with that. In our gospel today, we hear of a different structure and a different process. When Jesus asks his disciple, who do they say he is? It was Peter who declared that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. It was God who inspired Peter to make that declaration, and with that, Jesus appointed Peter to be as we call it now, the first pope. By worldly standards, Peter, or for that matter of fact, the rest of the disciples, were hardly qualified or capable for any leadership role. The appointment of Peter, which by secular standards is questionable, says a lot about Jesus. But it goes to show that in the church, all power and authority that comes with appointment comes from God. Jesus also promised that Peter will be the rock on which he will build his church, and the gates of the netherworld can never hold out against it. But throughout the history of the church, there are numerous occasions when the church and the Pope faced mortal danger, and yet there was divine intervention. One was in the year 452, when Athila the Hun and his barbaric horde came upon Rome to kill and to plunder. Going out to meet him was the old and frail Pope Leo the Great, hoping to negotiate with Athila the Hun and prepared to lay down his life for his people. In an unexpected and surprising turn of events, Attila the Hun and the barbarians turned back and left Rome untouched. One account has said that when Attila the Hun met the Pope, he saw two looming figures flanking the Pope, said to be St. Peter and St. Paul, and they were wielding swords and warning Attila. He also saw a huge heavenly army behind the Pope, and he recoiled and immediately retreated. So on that day, when he met Attila the Hun, Pope Leo showed that meekness is the mightiest of heaven's power. 
And again later on, the famous Prince Emperor, Napoleon Bonaparte, once threatened the church, saying that in a few months, he will destroy the church. The Pope's spokesman replied, If in the 1,800 years we Catholics have failed to destroy the church, do you really think that you will be able to do so? Napoleon Bonaparte will later find out the answer after his defeat and during his exile. It is often said that the church is human, even too human, with a weakness, failings, scandals, and whatever. But also must be said that the church is divine because Jesus Christ is the head and we are the members of his body. Yet the church at all levels has its flaws, it has failed, and it even has been faithless at times. But let us remember that Jesus is our head, and he will protect us from the destructive power that comes out of the gates of the underworld. The church has withstood the torrents and violent storm that have threatened it because it is founded on rock. My dear brothers and sisters, like Pope Leo the Great, who showed that meekness is the mightiest power from heaven, let us walk the path of simplicity. Let us walk the path of humility. Let us walk the path of charity. Then we, the church, will be able to lead the world in the way of salvation. Amen.